One of the great things about type layers is that they remain editable. And that's true even after you've saved and closed and reopened a document, as long as you saved it in a format that retains layers, like the Photoshop format. In this video, we'll look at some ways to edit type layers. If you're following along, you can use this image from the practice files for this tutorial, or an image of your own that has type layers. If you want to change all of the text on a type layer the same way, then here's what to do. Go to the Layers panel and select the Type Layer. Then go over to the Tools panel and select the Type Tool. You don't have to highlight all the text on the layer. Now if you want to make a change, let's say a change to the font size, go up to the Options bar and choose the option that you want. So I'm going to type in a different point size here in the Font Size field. And that affected everything on this type layer. The same is true if you have multiple lines of type on a layer. To see that, let's select this type layer in the Layers panel. We still have the Type tool selected in the Tools panel, so we'll go up to the Options bar and we'll click on the Font Color field. In the Color Picker, you can choose another color for this text. I'll move the Color Picker over so that we can see the text. One thing I sometimes like to do in the Color Picker is check only web colors and that limits the number of choices, which makes it easier to choose a color. I'm going to choose this color gray, and you can see that that affected all the text on the selected type layer. And then I'll click OK. Now let's say that I've clicked on a regular layer and I'm doing some other work in this image. And then I decide that I want to change just one of the words on this layer. I don't have to bother selecting the type layer that contains these words. All I have to do is select the Type tool in the Tools panel, and then come into the image and click and drag over the portion of that text that I want to change, and that automatically selects the correct type layer in the Layers panel. Now that I have that text selected, I could change any of the options in the Options bar, or I can actually change the words of the text. So I'm going to type Fine Clothing instead of Custom Clothing. And then I'll go up to the Options bar and click the check mark to accept that change. Down at the bottom of this image, we have another kind of text. If I click on that, you can see that a type layer is selected. And on this type layer, there's a text box. This kind of text is called paragraph text. Let me show you quickly how this was made, and then I'll show you how to edit it. I'm going to come up here. And with the Type tool selected, I'm going to hold down the Shift key and click to start a new type layer. And then I'm going to drag. And as you can see, that created a text box. Now you can just type in this box and the text will wrap when it gets to the edge of the box. Instead of typing, I'm going to go up to the Type menu and choose to paste this dummy text, just so that we have something to see in that box. Now if I change the shape of the box, you can see that the text rewraps. I'm going to go up to the Options bar and click the Cancel symbol to delete that in-progress type layer. And now let's go down to the actual paragraph text in this image and click on it and reshape the text box to reflow this text. Hold down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on Windows as you hover over one of the edges of the text box and then drag outwards to reflow the text from the center out. Then release your finger from the mouse or trackpad and release your other finger from the Option or Alt key and I've managed to reflow the text from three lines to two lines while maintaining the position of the text box in the center of the screen. Now I'll go up to the Options bar and click the check mark to accept that change. When you're done editing type layers, you want to be sure to save in a format that retains layers, like the Photoshop format or the PSD format. So that's an introduction to editing type layers in Photoshop. Try these techniques on some of your own images. When you want to make an object that has a geometric shape, like a rectangle or a circle, you could use one of the selection tools and fill it with color. But there's another way to make a shape that gives you more flexibility, and that's to use one of the shape tools. To see how it works, open this image from the practice files for this tutorial. Then in the Tools panel, go down to the Shape Tools, which are located here. Click the Flyout menu to see the different shape tools. I'm going to choose the Rounded Rectangle tool. Using this tool will automatically create a layer in the Layers panel. So go over to the Layers panel and select the layer above which you want your new shape layer. I'll select the background layer. Now come into the image and click and drag 
to create a shape with rounded corners. Photoshop has made a new layer over in the Layers panel. This is a special kind of layer, a shape layer, that contains smoothed edged objects that can be resized and reshaped and still retain their smooth edges. For example, we could reshape the roundness of the corners of this rounded rectangle shape. That's done in the Properties panel that popped out when we made the shape. Come down to this section of the Properties panel and hover over any of the corner icons. And then drag to the right to make the corners rounder. Because there's a highlighted link icon in between these four icons, all four corners change together. Let's close the Properties panel by clicking the double-pointed arrow at the top right of the panel and then go to the Layers panel and click off the rounded rectangle layer onto a different layer for just a second. And as you do, take a look at the rounded corners and you can see how smooth they are. Let's click back on the rounded rectangle layer again to see that we can also change the size of the entire shape and still retain the smooth edges. I'll go up to the Edit menu and choose Free Transform. And this time it says Free Transform Path, because Photoshop knows what kind of object we have on this layer. Hold down the Shift key to constrain proportions, and the Option key, that's the Alt key on Windows, to resize the shape from the center out. And then go to any of the corners and drag outward, and you can make the shape bigger. And while we're still in Free Transform, let's change the shape of this shape. I'll go to the bottom edge of the shape, and I'll drag up. And then let's accept these changes by going up to the Options bar and clicking the check mark. Now if you go back to the Layers panel and click on another layer, you can see that the edges of the shape are still smooth. Let's click on the rounded rectangle layer one more time to move the shape into place. I'll go to the Tools panel and I'll get the Move tool, and then I'll click and drag the shape using the pink Smart Guides that appear to align it to the other elements in the image. One of my favorite things about shape layers is the way that you can change the color of a shape layer on the fly. Go over to the Layers panel and double-click on the thumbnail on the rounded rectangle layer. That opens the color picker. As long as the color picker is open, when you move out into the image, your cursor changes to an eyedropper, and you can click on any part of the image to sample the color from there and automatically color your shape. Click OK to close the color picker. And you can reopen the color picker anytime the same way and choose a different color for your shape. In many ways, a shape layer acts just like any other layer. For example, you can change the opacity of a shape layer. To do that, go to the Opacity slider at the top of the Layers panel and drag to the left to make the shape less opaque or more translucent. When you're ready to save an image that has shape layers, be sure to use the Save As command and save the working file in a format that retains layers, like the Photoshop or PSD format. That way your shape layers will be available the next time you open the file so you can make changes to them. Take some time to experiment with some of the other shape tools that are located in the same place in the Tools panel, like the Ellipse tool, which you can use to make ovals and circles. Coming up, we'll explore the Custom Shape tool and discover lots of custom shapes that come with Photoshop that you may not know you have. One of the easiest ways to add an object to an image is to use the custom shapes that come with Photoshop. If you haven't discovered the custom shapes, here's how to find them and apply them. You can use this image from the practice files to follow along or any image of your own. In the Tools panel, go down to whichever Shape tool is showing at the moment and press and hold, and from the Flyout menu, select the Custom Shape tool. Go up to the Options bar for this tool, and over on the right, you'll find a Shape Picker. Click on the Shape Picker, and you'll see some icons of a few custom shapes, but there are lots more. If you click the gear icon on the right side of this drop-down panel, you'll find a long menu. From there, choose All. And that's going to bring in all these categories of custom shapes that you see listed here. If this message appears, click OK. Now go to the bottom right corner of the panel and drag down and to the right to stretch out the panel and see all the shapes that are there. My screen isn't large enough to show all of them, but there are many to explore. Since we're working on an image for a custom Taylor Enterprise, here's the perfect image, these scissors. And there are actually a couple scissors to choose from. 
I'm going to select this one by clicking on it, and then I'll click in a blank area to close the shape picker. Before I draw out a scissors shape with this custom shape tool, I'll take a look at the layers panel and I'll make sure that I've selected a layer above which I want the new shape layer that Photoshop will make to be created. I've got the background layer selected. I'll move into the image and I'm going to hold down the shift key to constrain proportions so the scissors aren't distorted. And then I'll click and drag and I have a scissors shape. I can change the size and the position and the color of this shape. Let's change the color to white. To do that, I'll go over to the shape layer that just appeared in the layers panel and I'll double click the thumbnail on that shape layer to open the color picker. And then I'll select white and I'll click OK. To make the scissors smaller, I'll go up to the Edit menu and I'll choose Free Transform Path. And then I'll hold down the Shift key to constrain proportions and I'll drag in to make the scissors smaller. When I think they're just about small enough, I'll click inside of that box and drag to position the scissors where I want them, right there. And then to accept all those changes, I'll go up to the Options bar and I'll click the big check mark. I'll go over to the Layers panel and I'm going to click on a layer other than the scissors layer to see the result. So as you probably discovered, the Custom Shape tool works just like the Rounded Rectangle tool that we covered in the last video in this tutorial, as well as all of the other shape tools. The shape on this shape layer remains editable, so you can change the color, the size, the position, and more anytime you want, as long as you save in a format that retains layers, like the Photoshop or PSD format. So have fun exploring and applying a lot of the other custom shapes that come with Photoshop. Layer blend modes are a quick way to blend two images together. One of the many situations in which blend modes are useful is to add a textured look to an image. To start, open this photograph from the downloadable practice files for this tutorial, or a photo of your own. The first step is to add another image, an image of a texture. Go to the File menu and choose Place Embedded. Navigate to an image of a texture, like this one from the practice files for this tutorial, and click Place. This is just a photo that I snapped of a wall. It's a good idea to capture images like this when you happen to see them so that you have a collection of textures to work with in Photoshop. To finish placing the texture image, I'll go up to the Options bar and click the check mark. Take a look at the Layers panel. Because we use the Place Embedded method of adding an image, Photoshop automatically made a new layer for the textured photo. Make sure that new texture layer is selected. And then to apply a layer blend mode, go to this drop-down menu at the top of the Layers panel. Here you'll find a list of many blend modes to choose from. Each blend mode is a different formula for blending the colors on the selected layer with the colors on any layers below. The results depend on the images you're using, so rather than try to predict what will happen if you choose a particular blend mode, the easiest thing to do is just try them out on the images you are using. One way to do that is to just click on a blend mode in this menu to apply it. For example, we could click on the overlay blend mode to see how it looks on this image. Photoshop is just blending the colors and tones in the texture layer with those on the background layer just below. Or we could try another one. Let's try soft light, which is similar to overlay but more subtle. And you could go through clicking each blend mode in the blend mode menu to test it out on your image combo. But here's a bonus tip. There's a quicker way to try out different blend modes, and that's to cycle through them using this shortcut. Go to the Tools panel and select the Move tool. Then hold down the Shift key as you press the Plus key, which is at the top of your keyboard. And each time you press and release the Plus key, the next blend mode down in the menu is applied. And if you look at the Layers panel, you'll see the names on the layer blend mode changing as I do this. And if you want to move the other way up the menu, hold the Shift key and press the minus key on your keyboard. On this pair of images, I liked the look of the Overlay Blend Mode. So I'll go back to the Blend Mode menu and I'll choose Overlay. 
If the result is too strong for your taste, you can lower the opacity of the texture layer using the Opacity slider, which is just to the right of the Blend Mode menu. With the texture layer still selected in the Layers panel, I'll drag the Opacity slider to the left by hovering over its name and dragging. When you're happy with the blended result, go to the File menu, choose Save As, and be sure to save your working file in the Photoshop or PSD format. Adding texture to a photo isn't the only thing the blend modes are useful for. Layer blend modes are also a simple way to blend the content of any two images together. To practice that, let's go up to the File menu, choose Open, and navigate to another photo from the practice files. This one of some tangled yarn. I'll click Open, and then I'll add another photo to this one by going to the File menu, choosing Place Embedded, navigating to a second photo, like this one from the Practice Files, and then I'll click Place. And then I'll go up to the Options bar and click the check mark. Let's apply a layer blend mode to the top layer. With the Move tool still selected in the Tools panel, I'll go up to the Layer Blend Mode menu, and I'll try choosing an option from here, or, as I already showed you, you can hold down the Shift key and click the plus key on the keyboard to cycle through different blend modes to get a different look with every blend mode. I liked the Lighten blend mode on this pair of images, so I'll go back to the Blend Mode menu, and I'll choose Lighten. You can get some really interesting blends of content on multiple images this way. So practice with some layer blend modes on images of your own. In the next video, you'll learn about another way to blend images together, and that's using a layer mask. So stay tuned.